All right, welcome back again. We're just continuing from where we left off. So we have been looking at the orders of reaction, right? First order, second order, and third. Zero order, first order, and second order. So before I continue, right, in the example I showed you, we just doubled the concentration of each reactant. All right? I'm going to do something here. So it can probably be a little easier to spot. All right, so let's say, let's look at the concentration. All right, what happens when we double the concentration for, for the reactant and compare them for each others? So if we double the concentration, right? If the reaction is zero order, what happens? versus first order and second order so for zero order if you double the concentration remember this is unaffected so read read remains the same I'm just going to put same, same rate. So we can double the concentration, right? Which means it goes up by two. For the first order, because it's proportional, it will go on uh, the rate now will also go up by two. So rate for first order and rate for second order for the second order we know that it should go by four All right so what I normally tell my students and they get it that way whatever you do to the concentration just put it inside the bracket, right? So if we double the concentration, right? Let's create that. So since as rate is proportional to concentration, if we double the concentration, let's take the square of that, we would get four. If we triple the concentration, take the square of that, we get nine. Let's quadruple it, right? Take the square of that, we get 16. So for a second order reaction, right? Look at what, when you get the table, look at what happened to the concentration. Look how it was varying. So if you double the concentration, it should go by four. If you triple the concentration, the rate should go by by nine so over here when you get the table look at what happened to the concentration and this is what must happen to the rate so if you double the concentration of a particular reactant the rate must go up four times if you triple the concentration of a particular reactant the rate must go up nine times if you quadruple it, increase it by 4, the rate must go 16 times. That means for any concentration, if you would triple it, for any reactant, if you would triple the concentration for a first order, it must go by 3. But for a second order, it must go by 9. So this is what you need to remember. If you increase it by four, it's for first order. Remember, for zero order, zero order, it is unaffected. So the rate will stay the same as it was in the previous experiment. Remember, when we are doing this, 
we will be comparing two experiment so when i say the rate stays the same it will not change for the second experiment for first order remember we say it is rate is proportional to the concentration so if you look here you can see that they are increasing by the same amount this is going up by if the concentration goes up by two rate goes up by two concentration goes up by four rate goes up by four but for second order remember if your concentration is going up by four four squared that's 16 your rate must go up by 16 right so just remember that now i'm going to put a table on the board again and we're going to find out the orders of the reactions Right, so this is the question we're going to do. So just pause the video and take off the table and because I'm going to erase it and work the questions. Alright, so just pause it here and take a video and take a picture of it. Not a picture, write it off in a book or on a piece of paper. Alright, so first thing now, alright. What is the order of the reaction with respect to X and Y? So again, if we want to find the order of the reaction with respect to X, we need to find two experiments where we change the concentration of X but keep the concentration of Y constant. So looking at this one, Experiments 1 and 2, the concentration of X is varied and Y is constant. So we could use experiment 1 and 2. Let's check because it's not always just two experiments that we can compare. All right? So let's see if we can compare two other experiments. You can again pause and check for yourself if you can find two other experiments where a is constant but the, where a where the concentration of a changes but the concentration of b is constant so you can pause and check all right and we can see that the other two experiment is experiments three and four in experiments three it is 0.5 experiment four it is one and b is constant so you could also use experiments 3 and 4. Experiment 1 and 3 could not work, A is constant. Experiments 2 and 3 cannot work, even though you change the concentration of A, the rate, the concentration of B also changes. So, so that cannot work. All right. So going from A to B, Sorry, from 1 to 2, what happened to the concentration of A? So, remember now, so 2 divided by 0 0.5, you should get 4. And so, I do not want this to be 40. I want this to be, this has to be 80. Alright. So, the concentration, it went up four times, right? So, this went up four times, and if we look at the rate, it also went up four times. That means rate is proportional to the concentration of X, so it is first order. Let's look at what happened in B, not in B. Where's the next experiment? Experiments three and four. Here, we doubled the concentration, right? So here, it went up. The concentration went up two times. Let's look at what happened to the rate. The rate went up two times, right? So as you can see, in experiments one and two, we increased the concentration four times. 
and the rate also went up four times. But in these two experiments, we used the concentration of A as 0.5, and for experiment four, we used it as one. And we see that the rate of reaction moved from 180 to 60, right? So we can see it went up two times, right? So we can see that even though we change how much we increase the concentration by, we see that the rate is proportional to the concentration. We double the concentration, the rate, it double. Increase it by four, rate increased by four. So we know that using experiments one and two, or experiments three and four, the rate of reaction with respect to X is first order, All right? So our rate equation will be rate is equal to K X squared, no, not squared, it's first order. So rate would be equal to K X. Now for the concentration of Y, which two experiments can we use? You can check that. All right, so we cannot use the first two experiments. Those are constant. But for experiments two and three, the concentration changes, right? But remember, that's only one criteria. Let's check A. Before we check A, let me just fill it up. All right, so two and three, the concentration of Bx, concentration of Y, changes, but X also changes. So we cannot use experiment two and three. But if you look at experiments one and three, the concentration of X is the same, all right? But the concentration of Y changes, all right? So we can use experiments one, and three because in these two experiments the concentration of x is the same but the concentration of y changes let's see if we, have, if we can find two more experiments all right pause and check all right so the other two experiments would be experiments four and five for experiments four and five a x is constant, but b x y it doubles. So we can use experiments four and five. So let's see what happens. For experiments one and three, the concentration if it moves from one to three. From one to three, that means it was increased three times. And if it moved from 120 to 180, right, two nines is 18. So remember, I showed it in the first video. Just divide the bigger rate by the smaller one, right. So, when you triple the concentration, the rate went up nine times. So the concentration, the concentration increased increased three times, but the rate increased nine times. Now, if you look at if you check back at the first part of this video, we said that if you triple the concentration and the rate goes up nine times, that is second order, all right? That means based on these two experiments, it is second order with respect to 
y. So radius is equal to k y squared. Right. Keeping a constant for experiments 1 and 3, we triple the concentration of y. The rate went up 9 times. So when the triple concentration and rate goes up 9 times, that's second order. All right. Let's try experiments 4 and 5. For 4 and 5, we doubled the concentration. How was the rate affected? By how much? The rate increased for sure, but by how much? Again, you would say 1,440 divided by 360, and we get 4. So, 1,440 divided by 360, the answer is 4. That means when we double the concentration, the rate, it went up 4 times. Again, when this happens, it's second order. Double the concentration, the rate goes up 4 times, that is second order. So whichever experiment they use, you would have still figured out that it was second order. Here we tripled the concentration, so the rate the rate went up nine times. Second order. Here you double the concentration, rate the rate went up four times, so you know it is second order. Alright? And that's how you would read the table. Now the overall order of the x, the overall order for this reaction would be 3. So the overall order is equal to 1 plus 2, give her 3, and the overall rate equation, so the rate is equal to k, kx. y squared right. now let's calculate the rate constant if you want to calculate the rate constant k we are going to choose an experiment right and fill in this formula all right so our first calculations I'm going to introduce you to is to find the rate constant. So if rate is equal to k x y, if one k we divide by x y squared, all right? They cancel each other. Whatever you do to this side of the equation. I'm going to do over this side. So you would have x y squared. So if you want to find k, it's the rate divided by the concentration of the reactants. So x y squared. So all you have to do is choose an experiment. Alright, so for example, I'm going to start with experiment number one. And for experiment number one, the rate was 20. And the concentration of x was 0 0.5. And the concentration of y was 1. All right, so it will be 20. 1 squared is 1. 1 times 0.5, that's 0.5. So the answer is 40. All right, so it's that simple. Just the rate over the concentration. Remember, if it's second order, you must square it. Let's do our next experiment. 
Because if this is a constant, then it should not change for any of the experiments. So let's try experiment number four. All right, so for number four. So this was using experiment number one. Number one. Here I'm going to use experiment number two. Not number two, number four. So k is equal to find number four. The rate was 360. Concentration of x was one. And concentration of y was three. So we know 3 squared is 9, 9 times 1, so 360 divided by 9, 9 4 is 36, so the answer again, you would get 40. So as you can see, the k did not change for the experiment, and if you try for experiment 2, it would be 80 divided by 2, you will get 40. Because the experiment for experiment 2, the concentration of x was 2, the concentration of y, it was 1. 1 squared is 1, 1 times 2 is 2, 80 divided by 2, that is 40. So, you would get 40 as the answer. Now, for module 2, alright, of this case syllabus, you will have to work out your units. So the unit for k is not specific, all right? So based on the orders of the reaction, the unit will vary. So you have to work out the units. And we'll move on to equilibrium and solubility product. You will again have to work out your units. All right, so practice to work out the units. So we are going to work out the, the units for k. So you can just pause and write up the answer. All right. So we're going to calculate the units for k. All right, so let me just write up that. So k is equal to read divided by x y squared remember the unit for rate is moles per dm cube per second so moles per dm cube that means mole is the numerator dm cube is the denominator so let's say mole per dm cube our mole slash dm cube this is what it means right but the rate rate is moles per dm cube per second all right so moles per dm cube per second per second means s the second is a denominator all right so remember when you have the negative sign here it means the unit is a denominator. So mole is the numerator, dm cube is the denominator. So let's see per second, it means that it is one over s. So all of this here, this is rate moles per dm cube per second. And we are supposed to divide it now by x. Remember, this is no concentration, so for rates, whenever this is square brackets, it means concentration. So we use square brackets to represent concentration. So, and the unit for concentration is moles per dm cube, right? Y is also concentration. Now, remember, we squared it, right? So, Y squared is saying y times y so we have to put 
most per DMQ for this one as well as this one. And that's how we will get mole over DMQ times mole over DMQ. Alright? So this right here is for X. Right? So that's for X. And these two, that's Y squared. And over here, that is for the rate. So it is rate divided by x times y squared. Those are the units. Now remember, it's division. So from primary school, remember, if you have 1 over 4, let's say, divided by 1 over 6, that would in turn become 1 over 4 times 6 divided by 1. So whatever is on the right side of the division sign, flip it. So that means everything on this side is going to be flipped. So it's moles over DMQ times 1 over S times DMQ over mole times DMQ divided by mole times DMQ divided by mole. Of course, if you're good with maths or whatever, you don't have to write out the three of them, right? Could be mole cube, but I'm just explaining it in details. If anybody don't understand, right? So if you want to go ahead and bring them together, that's fine. But I'm doing it the long way. So here, mole will cancel mole, DMQ will cancel DMQ. Alright, what are we left with? And the denominator here, that would be DM6. Alright, we have two moles here. But remember now, the mole is a denominator. So it must have a minus sign. It's two moles. Alright, we still have the S. And the S is also a D denominator. Alright? So that would be the unit. So K for our experiment, K was 40. DM6. Alright? That would be the unit. And so that's it for this video. We will work more questions like this and other questions, right? So this is part two and I'm going to stop here. Alright, so again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comment section.